Today I want to share with you some easy and fun techniques on how you can customize your printed backgrounds from a digital printable paper pack. I'm using my brand new Oxide Jelly Prints here. These you can find in my Etsy shop. I have digitalized them after I have made them on my jelly plate. And the link of course is down below in the description box if you want to have these digital papers for your own stash. I'm using some really simple materials today. I'm using some really simple techniques and I guess everything that you need you have at hand at home or you can get it really easily. I wanted to focus for this video on the really really simple things and I wanted to go back to the basics a little bit. Here you can see some of the results that we are getting within this video with really simple techniques and really simple mediums. Perhaps you know this kind of strange thing. You have bought a digital printable paper pack, some backgrounds for example, as I'm having here. And then you are asking how can I customize those? How can I make them match and cohesive to my other papers that I want to use in my junk journal? And that's exactly what I want to show you here today with some really really easy things. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm making some marks with a paintbrush and some black acrylic paint. I really like this because this is so relaxing and this brings so much artsy feeling to such a background and it's the most simplest thing that you can imagine. For this page here, I'm using mainly the lighter areas to put my black marks in, but I'm also putting them a little bit to this orange area, as you could see. The same thing, of course, you can do with white acrylic paint. You can see that here. Um, for this, I'm using the colored areas of the background and I'm putting my white dots here and there to those colored areas. Those both papers would fit perfectly together, even if they are totally different and they are made so fast <laughs> that you can't imagine that. <laughs> so um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to use some golden paint and a splatter brush. I'm using this brush here. I found out for myself that this is my favorite um, brush for splattering. Of course, you can use what you have. A normal brush would work as well. Um, and I'm using some golden acrylic paint that I have mixed with some golden watercolor paint. Um, that would work with only watercolor or only acrylic paint, of course, as well. You could use any paint that you can mix with water so that you can water it down a little bit that you have at hand. I really like the contrast between gold and white, so I'm adding some white splatters here as well. Perhaps you can see how the contrast is changing immediately. I really, really love this effect. And this is so simple. I know I'm talking about taking paint and splattering to uh, it to a page, but <laughs> later on that looks so wonderful. And another technique that I really like is using stencils. So um, to apply my Distress Oxide ink here, I'm using this little brush thingy. You could also use a sponge. You don't need Distress Oxide ink. You could also do that with acrylic paint, uh, with watercolor paint. Um, it would be a little bit more difficult. Um, if you want to use watercolor, then don't use too much water, but that would work as well. So here I'm applying that to the lighter areas of my page as well to get more contrast and to get this pattern um, really, really intensive. Another thing that you of course can do is you can take your dirty stencil. So I like to clean my stencils exactly like I'm doing it here. I'm placing that to my next page. Then I'm spritzing some water and then I'm just turning it around so that the ink that is still on the stencil can get to the page. You will get a really loose uh, pattern of this stencil but in, in my eyes that looks really really interesting it's not so clear not so yeah not so much in the foreground but it's still visible and here um, I'm using 
the yeah the tiniest rests on my stencil of this ink it was still a little bit wet I'm just placing that there on top of my paper going over it with a brayer and you will have a next interesting pattern that makes your background unique and then you have a background that is not only printed, even if you perhaps think it's beautiful, but you have your own background. And of course, you can use the colors that you want and that match the rest of the papers that you want to use in your journal. Um, the white pattern that I have made before, I've made with white gesso. Um, and of course, there are different techniques as well. You can uh, press this white gesso with a spatula through the stencil then you will get a really clear result but you can also take a, a wet um, baby wipe as i'm doing that here and rubbing the rest of the gesso through the stencil it not only cleans the stencil of course um, that's good <laughs> so that we don't waste any um, gesso and any other materials but you will also get a second and third generation of this stenciling and I really like how this comes out it is like a broken wall or something like that um, if you look to old buildings for example you sometimes have this effect that you have a clear um, pattern of something and then it fades out a little bit because it is for example broken or very old and I really really like this effect some black acrylic paint here for more contrast but of course that's optional but in this journal where I wanted to use those papers I have many black splatters and much black um, accents so I'm using much black here on my backgrounds as well but if you have for example a vintage journal with much brownish and beige um, colors then of course you could also use another color for um, splattering or for stamping what I'm doing here next I'm using this um, script stamp this is one of the Tim Holtz uh, Stampers Anonymous collection um, this is really really cool it has this ledger uh, script on it and I really like that um, especially in those areas where the paper is um, a little bit more white you can also of course stamp with more um, yeah, not so abstract things like the script that I've used before. So here I'm showing you what happens if you use some butterflies. Of course, you can use any other more concrete um, stamp as well. I really like these butterflies. They are uh, from Tim Holtz as well. And um, here I'm not so happy with the stamping on the colored areas. If I want to do that the next time, I would put my stamps more to those areas that are a little bit lighter then the stamp comes out way better than here on the page the next thing that you of course can use is some crackle paste um, i'm using this ranger crackle paste you can use any kind of crackle paste that you have or that you can get of course and i'm applying that with a spatula as well really really randomly that covers up a little bit of this orangey honey yellow background of course but you will see that will get a really really cool effect and this is also a great idea if you perhaps think oh this background is too yellow then you can mute the yellow down a little bit no that's not correct you are not muting it down but you are bal balancing it out with um, some other colors so in this case i have spritzed some coffee while my um, crackle paste was still wet and now I'm adding a really extreme um, contrast color by adding this turquoise distress oxide ink with some water for that I'm applying that to my acrylic block as you could see and then I'm smearing that randomly over the page and for me now this background is something yeah really really unique um, it's a pop of color even for for example a vintage journal i would use this as a page where you yeah you flip the the other page and then you think oh here is color <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> so sometimes i really enjoy using those really extreme colors and another thing that you of course also can do is you can emboss your paper with an embossing machine I'm using uh, this embossing folder that at the same time makes some um, tiny cutouts as you can see here. So these stars 
fall out from my paper now. I really like those embossing folders that also um, cut at the same time. And after I have run that through my Big Shot machine, I'm applying some gilding wax. Um, alternatively, you could also use some golden watercolor um, paint with re really less water, or you could also use acrylic paint that would work as well. But this wax is, yeah, really, really shiny. It looks like metal with other mediums. You would get a slightly different effect, of course. Um, but if you want to have this gold, of course, use what you have, please. Then I went to my sewing machine um, because I thought, what about doing some fast flow stitching? Um, I have, uh, yeah, as you can see, turned the paper around. <laughs> this video is on speed up uh, settings, but um, that is really fast, a really cool effect. And yeah, you can get really, really interesting patterns to your paper. And you have this um, textured feeling if you go over that with your finger. I really like that. Some gold and white acrylic paint here um, for more contrast and more interest. And then I'm trying something that I have tried uh, never before. Uh, I'm using my embossing ink pad here. And I'm pressing that really randomly to my page. And then I'm using some embossing glaze. So please don't be too hard with me. This is nearly the first time that I'm using this glaze from this embossing powder thingy. Um, and I have not so much experience with that. But that's also a thing that I would like to encourage you to. Try the things out. If you have something that is in your shelf and you don't know why it is there, take it out <laughs> and try it out. Um, this result for me was the most surprising of the whole um, bunch of papers that I have done here. I really like how that came out. This is so shiny, even if I don't like this shiny things, but on this page it looks just elegant and I really, really love that. You have seen um, this turquoise and honey um, orange contrast before so I'm putting some turquoise here to my page as well of course that's optional and another thing that you can do is you can splatter with some paint and then take another background turn it the other way around press it to the first one go over that with your fingers a little bit to yeah bring the color or the paint around a little bit and then you will get really really cool results especially with this golden acrylic paint and white gesso um, that is a really really awesome effect when this is dry it looks nearly uh, yeah nearly like um, those fairy wings i really like this structure in this golden areas there um, i will show you that in the end of the video a little bit more in detail when it's dry it's way more extreme in this little glass container i have um a strange mixture. <laughs> so I have had an old Distress Oxide ink pad that was broken and I have put that overnight into some water to get the rest of the ink out of this ink pad. So this is mainly Distress Oxide ink with water and I have put a tiny little bit of coffee um, to this mixture and I really like to splatter with those um, yeah leftover materials. I mean this ink pad was empty and normally you would throw it away but of course you can also use those things. And here I'm um, doing the same thing as before. I'm pressing the other page upside down to the first one to get um, this yeah interesting look of those splatters to both pages and especially with the white gesso that looks really really cool this oxide ink you can't see in the camera sorry you can't see that in uh, you can see it in reality but the camera nearly can't catch that okay so and here are our results um i'm really really happy 
what came out of this little experiment <laughs> and I hope of course that you can get some inspiration from this what you can do with your printed backgrounds from a digital printable paper collection um, if you want to try that out with exactly these oxide jelly prints then I can recommend to check out the info box there's a link to my Etsy shop where I have listed those paper packs there are three in total so I have made um, three smaller paper packs instead of one big uh, because I know that not all of you need so many of those backgrounds so you can collect them all or you can choose one or you can take something totally different of course <laughs> use what you have use what you like and try out things yeah that are so easy that you perhaps think oh that's too easy to do. I mean, what I did here is so simple and so, I would say, back to the roots or the basics that I am a little bit afraid to share that video perhaps, but I really like this. And especially if you are perhaps struggling with your motivation or you don't know what you want to do today, try this. Try the simple things. So many of you have written, oh, I'm struggling. I don't know how to start a junk journal. Then take some papers, um, print something out or take what you have. It doesn't have to be a printable, of course, and splatter around, stamp and use your stencils. Um, go through your stash, look what you have and use what you have. I know I'm saying that very often, but for me, this is one of the essentials. And it's some kind of a key to break those motivation issues, those inspirational problems. Um, if you can't find inspiration uh, somewhere, then go back to the basics and go back to perhaps what children would do. I mean, splattering in such a way is something that you could also do with your children or that a child would perhaps do. And go back to this and I'm pretty sure that you will find your motivation, you will find inspiration, you will find out different things, new things that you can do with the mediums that you already have. That's also a thing that I'm often thinking about. Um, what can I do with my mediums? Um, thinking about new ideas. It is not um, always so good and so necessary. Use what you have and play around with the things that you have. I wish you very much fun trying this out. See you the next time. Stay healthy, stay creative. Bye bye.